Excellent. What's up guys, welcome back to Paul's Hardware. This is my monthly build video for November 2018. I have a system here, I'm gonna put it all together today. At the beginning of this month, just a few days ago actually, I did parts lists and I did a $750 build and then I did more like a $1,400, $1,450 dollar build. This build is kind of right in between. If you take all the parts here, it's about $1,250. But I wanna point out, I've made some specific accommodations for the case I'm using today. This is the new Cooler Master SL600M, which I've wanted to build in since I first saw back at Computex, but this is a high-end case. It's a $200 case, and I've also paired it up with a 240 millimeter all-in-one liquid cooler, which costs about $120. So $320 for the case and the CPU cooler is a little on the high side, and you could easily shave off $100, $150, even close to $200 by going with a less expensive case and maybe an air cooler. But that said, everything here is about $1,250. You maybe could come in at around $1,100 again if you make some different choices there. But I will be talking a bit about building in this case today, and of course I'll be talking about this entire system altogether, and I will be testing this system in a follow-up video and comparing this system with the $3,000 plus system that I built last month, and we'll see kind of the gaming experience between both. Do you get that much more paying that much more for the high-end Intel system with the 9900K and an RTX 2080 Ti, or could you get yourself pretty much the same experience by going with an AMD setup? So I'm gonna be using the 2600, or actually the 2600X is the CPU I'm installing down there. And then for the graphics card, we have a Radeon Vega 56, uh, $400 version of that card. More on that in just a second though. Now the motherboard I've chosen is the MSI B450 Tomahawk and this one has uh, been reviewed by quite a few people and it's got good power delivery uh, for overclocking. It's also got a very nice feature set and it's only about $100. I did in the initial builds video at the beginning of the month talk about using a different motherboard, uh, the ASRock X470 Tai Chi, which I would recommend potentially upgrading to if you're gonna pair it with this case because that would allow you to connect uh, the front panel USB-C, USB 3.1 Gen 2 Type-C connector on that because this motherboard does not have that header. Other than that, everything else is perfectly functional. The liquid cooler is the Master Liquid ML240 RGB. This cooler performs quite well, and it's got some uh, fancy addressable RGB lighting on the fans as well as the cooler itself. But if you want to get by with something a little bit less expensive, this was the original piece I was planning on using, which is the Hyper 212 Black Edition. I will still integrate this into a system in the future because I wanted to give it a shot, but it's only $35. So $35 bucks for this versus $120 bucks for that. Save yourself a little bit of money and go with air cooling if you're trying to get in at a lower price. I did go with the higher end power supply for this build, the EVGA 650 GQ here, which is a few more bucks. It's 80 plus gold rated though, and it's a modular power supply. Um, but around $60, you should be able to find yourself a 550 watt or 650 watt 80 plus gold rated power supply with all black cables like that one. Now for the graphics card, I actually had to make a terrible choice. Or maybe you will have to make a terrible choice because I was able to make my choice when I was still able to get an aftermarket card for 400 bucks. Right now, what I have linked in the description is for $405, assuming the price is held, a blower style version of the Vega 56. Um, it's actually an ASRock variant there. This is just the standard reference design Vega 56. But what I'm using today is the card that I bought for $400 from Amazon just like two days ago, which is a Red Dragon version of the Vega 56, which has an aftermarket cooler, triple fan design, which I'm pretty confident will do a better job than the blower style design. So if you can find yourself a bargain on a Vega 56 like this one, then uh, definitely jump on it. Hopefully more of those will come out between now and Black Friday. And just to round things off, I have a 240 gig SSD for main operating system drive. And then I have uh, G-Skill RipJaws 5 DDR4 memory here, which is the kit that I recommended in the video's description because the 3200 speed kit is a nice fast kit that is good to pair with Ryzen. The RipJaws 5 kits from G-Skill do work uh, with Ryzen from all accounts and from my testing as well. But these are four gig sticks and I did want a 16 gig kit. So I'm actually gonna be swapping in this Flare X kit from G-Skill, which is a more expensive kit because it's very, very compatible with Ryzen. In. I'm just using it because it is a 2x8 gig kit. It's rated 3200 speed. Cast latency is 14, so I will change the timings on this to match the Ripjaws 5 kit that I originally recommended. So those are the parts I'm working with today, and it is time to assemble this computer. So the SL600M definitely makes an impression when you first get out of the box. Uh, it's got aluminum construction on the front and the top here, uh, and it's got a unique design. It's got two 200 millimeter intake fans at the bottom with what they're calling a chimney design. So vertical airflow pushes air northwards and then exhausts mainly out the top. So you might actually notice pretty quickly, for example, there's no 120 millimeter exhaust right here where you would expect one to be. Instead, on the other side of that, they've actually put a reservoir mount. So that's sort of a unique 
make use of that space if you're not going to use this for an exhaust. And there are a few things, unfortunately, that I was immediately not impressed with upon taking it out of the box. One is this. That's not exactly a stable sitting stance that it has going on there. I believe what's causing that is this back support, which is a piece of metal that's kind of got some wobbles going on it. And I'm guessing this got bent or something maybe during shipping. This unit does appear to have been previously unboxed. Maybe it was a sample that they checked out before they sent it over to me. But uh, it might be challenging to get that to bend back in place. So that's a little bit disappointing. Other than that though, the side panel here has Cooler's Master's method that they've been using for a while where you sort of loosen the thumb screws, pull it halfway off, and then it, it, it can sort of sit like that. Now, when I first did this and opened it up, it was making a noise. It was making Joe cringe, which is kind of the noise of like adhesive on glass or metal being slowly peeled away. And I believe that's actually from this bottom piece here. Feeling it here, it's pretty sturdy. This is a tempered glass piece and it's got some uh, metal reinforcement along the sides. It just seemed like this was possibly peeling away a little bit, slightly. It's not bad enough that I think it's a concern for me right now, but it would be if I was gonna be using the system long term, I'd be slightly concerned about that adhesive failing. Actually, the Leanne Lee case I've been using recently had that piece fail on the front of it, so it's made me slightly suspicious of cases that have tempered glass that is held on by a metal piece that's held to the tempered glass by just a piece of adhesive. And then the only other thing I wanted to mention here, just uh, as far as first impressions go, is where this panel sort of hooks onto that base piece there, just upon removing it, I was noticing a pretty good amount of wear already along this edge and from where that hooks in. Again, that would be covered when the side panel's on and everything. I'm just trying to give you guys my honest first impressions as I take this, this, this little case apart for the first time and prepare to build in it. I'm actually discovering uh, these little mounts are actually multi-purpose mounts. So they have SSD mounts, hard drive mounts, 2.5 inch or 3.5 inch drive mounts, and then they've got a bunch of other holes spaced out there. So I imagine you can mount a reservoir or a pump to one of these as well. Uh, one here is mounted at the back of this, uh, which is actually the power supply shroud. Uh, one back here at the back that I already showed you, and there's actually two on the front as well. At the very top is a pretty easily removable piece, and this is just a cover, so it's probably gonna block some noise at the top. Underneath is just mesh, so if you want more airflow, you can remove that, or if you want things to be a little quieter, or just to complete the look, pop it right back on. You can remove this front piece here, which again, is just pretty much a solid piece, but we don't care, because this isn't where the intake is happening. The intake is happening at the bottom of the case. Again, here you can see two more of those uh, mounts that are mounted there and there. You can also get a look at where the power supply is gonna mount right in there. And for the power supply, there is a extension cord. It's tied in there that feeds back to the back of the case so you can plug the power supply in where you normally would. There's also an included fan hub that's already plugged in. Got a couple 2.5 inch drive cages there as well. And here on the bottom, you can uh, get a look at those two 200 millimeter fans that are configured to use this as an intake. So big old dust filters right underneath there. This has a sort of unique design for a dust filter. You can pull it out from the back of the case entirely, but it's also attached here with like a hinge and another handle. So, but uh, which made me think you could, they made it so you could pull it out from the front too, which, which I appreciate. That would be kind of a nice feature to be able to do. But the front actually has these catches here, so you can't do that. But anyway, unique, <laughs> unique adjustable uh, filter for your intake fans there at the bottom. So I was a little baffled about how to get at the power supply mount here um, because it is kind of tucked away in there. So this piece is held on by two screws, screws at the top and two at the bottom. Remove those and then you can remove that. This also has two more mounting points for uh, 2.5 inch drives, by the way. Just put the plugs on them and then stick them on there. And then behind here, we actually have an outer shroud here as well as an inner piece that the power supply mounts to. And this is made so that you can remove this to support longer length power supplies since the power supply length, if it's longer or shorter, is gonna be longer that way since the top of the power supply is gonna be going up right there. 
So I got four thumb screws at the front right here that you need to loosen. And then this piece pops off and it's just held on by a couple plugs at the back there. And this is that same, this is that same similar rail system that Cooler Master has used in the past. So again, you can mount that there. You could shift it down if you needed to. And those lower two screws are what's holding this outer shroud on, whereas the upper two screws are, was what, is what was holding this piece on. And that's why it just fell when I removed it. So next we'll mount the power supply to that. And then this will mount back into the case there. I decided to mount uh, the SSD to the back here. Uh, interesting, the Cooler Master did not provide a little fine thread, the M3 threading screws. Um, no standard ones, just the little plug ones that are made to mount on that front SSD mount. I'm still using it back here. You still can. It's just slightly awkward in that once this is actually mounted, you're gonna have four little posts sticking out there, but it's it shouldn't stick out far enough that it actually conflicts with the side panel, so we can proceed. So guys, I'm just working on the cable management back here. I have added the little RGB controller so I can uh, have some RGB lights on the Cooler Master Master Liquid ML240R. However, I noticed a potential incompatibility issue that I wanted to point out. I'm mainly giving Cooler Master a hard time about this because they're two Cooler Master products. Cooler Master, all-in-one liquid cooler at the top, which would be a very good place to position it. These are the two fan plugs, the two headers for that. You'll note that at the maximum length here, they are about an inch short of actually reaching down here to the fan splitter. The fan splitter has mounts on the case itself with standoffs, so it's not really something you could reasonably move around. You probably want to keep it there. So just pointing that out, and uh, my solution here is just going to be a little fan splitter, which will also act as a little bit of an extension and give us just enough length to plug both of these in. Just like your video. I think you would need it. Oh, hey. Oh, yeah, look, look, it's like uh, things you might need when you're building a PC. More people should watch that fing video. <laughs> So everything is uh, pretty much installed now. Our Red Dragon Vega 56 just barely had enough clearance there at the end. And I was trying to plug it in. It's got an awkward plug position here because the PCB on this card actually only comes out to here. This entire area right here, here is just a fin stack, which actually has uh, air flow, air pass through flow, which actually I think will be very good for this case because the air coming up here can just go right through that radiator to provide some extra cooling for the GPU and then get up there to provide some ventilation for the liquid cooler, of course. But plugs on this are right in the middle. And it's just kind of awkward with this little, little cable here. I was actually saying earlier as I was building that this little space right here to pass like front panel connectors and USB and stuff is actually pretty nice and in a good position. And then Joe realized just now it's actually held on by a couple screws. I'm now discovering that this piece is actually uh, the entire cover for the bottom enclosure area that has the two fans on it, which does have also mounts for radiators and stuff if you want to re reconfigure for water cooling or something in that range. But removing those screws is giving me a little bit more clearance here, so maybe I can pass these PCI Express power cables through. All right guys, my build has been assembled in the SL600M. Everything is installed and plugged in, as far as I can tell. The front panel. I need to, oh, the front panel. That's correct, Joe. <laughs> Minor issue. All right, let's try that again with the front panel on now. But what I was about to say is, let me switch the power supply out in the back, but I can't because the power supply is on an uh, extension. So uh, pro tip, switch your power supply on first before you try to do your test boot and maybe do that with the side panel off so you can reach the switch on the power supply. <laughs> ah, there we go. So we have learned 
construction of a computer in this case. Uh, I think it is a unique layout and a unique design. And uh, as I already mentioned, some reviews have already come out on this when it comes to the performance. And if your graphics card is running hot, this does a really good job, obviously just taking all that air and feeding it directly up. That is also why it has such a high stance off the ground. So there's plenty of space here underneath. And if you're gonna have airflow like that, you definitely need to have a removable dust filter. And I guess one that folds too, because that's very convenient. But as usual, this has just been a build video and I will be following up later on testing the system for some performance and ideally plugging it into a 2560 by 1440 FreeSync monitor so we can test adaptive refresh rate gameplay on this configuration and give a bit of a comparison to the much more expensive system that I set up last month. But guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Definitely hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed it and links to the parts I used are down in the video's description below, uh, including this new case from Cooler Master. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time.